Yeah. So guys, shall we start? Yeah. Okay, so. Hello everyone and uh, welcome to our um, Asian Curator uh, Panel Talk 5. And for this session, uh, for the fifth session, we have a great honor having uh, Renan Laruan, uh, a Manila-based uh, creator and researcher. Uh, so for this session, uh, Renan will uh, talk about tasks, roles, and uh, dynamics of curatorial research in the diverse context of production presentation, especially considering uh, alternative methodology with a more uh, fluid and uh, flexible and uh, I suppose uh, centrifugal nature despite of and uh, different, different from a predetermined and standard uh, curatorial uh, operation. So for this session, uh, Rinan will um, speak on uh, this subject uh, regarding his extensive uh, curatorial experience, including uh, from Badung to Berlin, the fall of the moon uh, aligned uh, in uh, 2016 at uh, Savi Contemporary, uh, a, a Tripoli Agreement uh, at 2018 at uh, uh, Sharjah Art Foundation, and 2019, uh, the Mummy to a uh, Saber project at the uh, Singapore uh, BNL and uh, the ongoing project promoting arriving uh, violent departure. Irene, are you? Hello? Yeah. Oh. So uh, today we we'll also have our uh, old friend, our panelists with us uh, join the, joining the discussion. Uh, they are uh, Haju Kim, the deputy director at uh, our Sanja Center. Hi, Haju. Hello. And Hi. we also have uh, Alex Takuni, uh, the culture critique and professor of uh, uh, culture study at King He University. Hello, Alex. Hi. Good Hi. evening. Uh, we, we also have uh, Panwadi Nafakait Manunt, uh, the in independent arts curator and culture worker. Well, I suppose. Uh, um, I guess Renan uh, Poo Poo will join us uh, a bit later. And uh, we have uh, Muru Washida, uh, Washida Sun, director of uh, Toda Center. Hi, Muru. Hi. Hi. So uh, we also have uh, Xia Yang Guo, independent curator and founder of Toda Center. Hi, Xia. Yeah, hello. Hi. Uh, so um, without further ado, uh, Renan, please feel free to have a go. I will turn off this. Screen sharing, and you can do you can share your screen now. Mm. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much, Hang, and uh, thank you yeah, for uh, inviting me. Uh, so I'll just do a uh, share screen. Yeah. Uh, you can open it. Okay. So uh, yeah, my page. Can you see my, my presentation? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Is it live, the, the presentation? Is it working? Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, so thanks for uh, for organizing this. Um, um, this is a new song. You should uh, mute all participants. Yeah, the one. Well, if I do so, uh, Reina will be muted as well. Oh. You can download the Rina. Yeah. Simply allow the speaker. Yeah. You can control it. Yeah, I think it's working now. It's, yeah, it's yeah. working now. Okay. Um. So yeah. So I'm I'm really looking forward to discussing uh with you um the panelists and also the the members of the audience um mm -hmm. some ideas and perhaps uh your experience about uh or around curatorial research uh so. So I'm based in Manila. Uh, I mean, I'm currently in Sultan Kudarat, south of the Philippines, uh, since the pandemic started, or in, in the middle of the pandemic. Um, so, so this talk, uh, you don't hurry to form. 
um, it's really an invitation actually to unpack and uh, explore or even perhaps uh, debate, you know, uh, curatorial research uh, in the context of uh, production and uh, presentation in the region, uh, in Southeast Asia or in Asia or whatever that means, you know, or whatever that encompasses. Uh, so I'm also proposing uh, to invest um, some time, perhaps, uh, in looking into the emergent faculties of um, curatorial research, uh, which of course has been discursified elsewhere uh, by our peers who may or may not be uh, so keen on, on the development of uh, the curatorial and research in, in our respective contexts. Um, so, so here I'm, I'm really interested in the kind of, you know, uh, a bit of a demotion to a kind of comparative analysis um, in terms of curatorial research here and, and elsewhere. Um, so what I'm more interested perhaps is uh, to be more in touch uh, with uh, a curatorial research that is uh, formed according to our histories of production, histories of disciplines, and especially the ways in which uh, we've articulated it and, and documented. You know? and, and this is also to say that um, uh, the curatorial research that I'm, I'm referring to here is, is something that um, arrives in, in the middle or something that comes um, in the midst or in the thickness of uh, other disciplines, other movements, other thinking. Um, so, so here I'm, I'm more interested into curatorial research as something that adds um, into the process. And, and this kind of uh, notion of uh, the additional is much more uh, attractive uh, to me rather than say um, curatorial research as a mode of uh, deconstruction or a mode of um, uh, participation in you know, disciplinary border making. Um, so so I'm, I'm more interested how curatorial research adds to uh, the more stable disciplines of art history, uh, anthropology, uh, ethnography, and other domains that participate in, in art or visual culture. Uh, so, so here for me, curatorial research is something that um, in and of itself um, is already more than. You know? so, so this notion of uh, more than and this kind of notion of uh, self-sufficiency. Uh, I mean, it's it's still incomplete and it's still forming, but uh, it it already is uh, something that is more than. Um, so so I'll refer to to some of the projects uh, ongoing and past um, in order to discuss this as perhaps some sort of conditions and um, case studies, you know, to open the discussion. So you have the from Bandung to Berlin, if all of the moons aligned in two thousand sixteen. Uh, which I co-curated with um, Indonesian researcher Brigitta Isabella. Uh, the second one would be a Tripoli agreement in 2018 uh, with Georgia Art Foundation. Um, and then the Mami Tua Saber project, which is a paracuratorial project in the context of uh, Singapore Biennale 2019. And uh, Promising rivals, uh, violent leaders. and and here um, before you know I, I dive into uh, each project, I wanted to to preface my thoughts perhaps uh, and this kind of review of past projects um, by claiming that these uh, thoughts are animated by uh, three constellations. So so I'm these constellations are something that I'm very fascinated with in in the past. A uh, few months and also in the past year, um, and it's something that I think um, can be considered as another reference um, in terms of um, our curatorial movement or our curatorial ideas, uh, for example. Uh, so these three are one, um, the constellation of uh, neurodiverse perception. Uh, so I'm, I'm recently drawn into a lot of, you know, um, thinking around uh, autistic perception and the kind of spectrum and the kind of language and the kind of communication that is um, afforded into the overwhelming uh, realm of autistic perception for those who are more neurodiverse uh, as compared to us uh, neurotypicals. 
so that's one. Uh, second, I think I'm, I'm also drawn into the language of children. Um, so children in terms of uh, their relationship to politics and their kind of political subjectivity, uh, especially in terms of um, this kind of development psychology in which um, you know, children below 10 or you know, a certain ages in, in the development of a child has you know, a different relationship to uh, abstraction, including uh, politics. And, and this sort of connects to uh, what we would discuss later on in terms of uh, the ways in which exhibition curating try, always try to, to educate or to produce uh, individuals uh, being or becoming educated. Um, and third, I think, is, is a very personal one, which is uh, the notion of elderly speak, uh, in which, um, you know, um, spending a lot of time with my, my parents, uh, this, this is kind of interesting for me uh, in terms of how we, at a certain point, return to, to the notion of baby speak, uh, in terms of how we talk to seniors and elderly individuals. Um, <coughs> and this all three are, are for me very interesting because uh, it's being wrapped together by a thread uh, connected to uh, language and, and facilitation. Um, so, so as I mentioned in, in the proposal or in the, the abstract of the talk, um, this, this kind of notion of volition um, is something that's um, uh, quite interesting to unpack in terms of uh, curating and curatorial research uh, precisely because um, as a kind of neurotypical adults, uh, we have this kind of uh, relationship that come in the terms of agency, right? So this this kind of volition and and will and which is kind of uh, a totality in which we are allowed to produce um, exhibitions or which allows us to to curate something that is usually or sometimes refused to be curated, right? Um, so so this this. On the other hand, these three groups, you know, as compared to, to us neurotypical uh, adults, um, in which, you know, the, the communication, the language and facilitation is very instantaneous and very simultaneous. Um, these three groups, um, people living with autism, uh, children below 10, uh, elderly individuals, um, they always involve a certain degree of, um, exhibition, demonstration. Um, so, so they always receive this kind of um, um, something needs to be demonstrated to them and they need to, to exhibit something in order to prove their, their agency. Uh, and therefore it, it sort of forecloses the, the capacities uh, of these groups as um, individuals who could produce language and, and um, facilitation uh, interdependently. So, so there's a lot of um, uh, performance or evaluation around um, being independent. You know, the, the, the way we need to, to be uh, autonomous in terms of uh, the production of language. Um, so, so the first one that um, I'll, I'll discuss is uh, from Bandung to Berlin. So, so just a few elements of it uh, in relation to, to what I'm trying to uh, discuss about curatorial research. Um, so, so From Bandung to Berlin is actually a project that was initiated by Brigitte Isabella. Uh, so you can check the website. Um, and it started in 2014 and it went through uh, several iterations in uh, other exhibitions. Uh, and in 2016, uh, we decided to uh, do a curatorial period for the project uh, in which we, we uh, inaugurate the, 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 the project as an exhibition in itself. Um, so this curatorial period is, um, for me, very interesting because um, it's 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 a project that comes after you know intensive research. You know, so so it sounds very familiar with how exhibitions and other curatorial projects are done. Uh, exhibition as an output of, of research, uh, but in this sense, uh, what we what we were interested in doing was to to uh, produce uh, an exhibition that would act as a kind of uh, displaced research scenography. Um, so, so what do we mean by, by this uh, displaced research scenography? So here the audience uh, could parse or, or divide the, the thoughts and the elements of the exhibition. 
and for us curators it was an opportunity uh, to to disconnect you know to to disconnect the transnational or the transnational um, narratives around Cold War so so as as you um, imagine as you can imagine from Bandung to Berlin is you know of course the 1955 Bandung conference and the 1989 fall yeah. of Berlin it's also something very you know uh, familiar and also very much uh, discursified um, within exhibitions and in other you know domains. Um, so what we're interested in was to to consider the exhibition itself as a kind of um, site in which we could do research again uh, in terms of the new connections and in terms of new incongruent points in uh, the project. And, and this is achieved by um, taking into account uh, another set of historical references, um, not as points of departure. So exhibition or the standard exhibition would always use uh, historical references as a kind of points of departure or, or frames, um, which tend to produce a kind of essay or encyclopedic approach into the project. So, so this actually means that you know, the, the language being used in the exhibition making uh, with this kind of strategy um, is, is more confident, stable, and secure. And, and here we wanted, uh, we wanted to, to build new vocabularies in which uh, the language is, is not so sta stable or not so secure uh, at that point. Uh, so here the, the three historical references uh, were rendered as amplitudes, you know, so, so they're more of, you know, waves and, and frequencies or vibrations uh, rather than um, um, very um, firm um, points in terms of uh, the exhibition. So, so these amplitudes were uh, the 1946 Marshall Plan, the 1954 uh, Defense um, Seattle or the version of Southeast Asia of NATO, and the 1976 um, uh, telecommunication project, the first telecommunication uh, technology uh, in Southeast Asia. Um, so, so with this kind of, you know, um, uh, considering these uh, frames as, as amplitudes, uh, the task becomes um, not of explanation anymore, or not, you know, the, the burdening of discourse, uh, but rather more on uh, building vocabularies. Um, so, so in a way, it results in, in this kind of uh, resetting of alignments and producing new orbits in terms of how we uh, approach and how we look at uh, artistic uh, projects, uh, archives, and uh, other elements of the exhibition. Uh, so, so this is the, um, the floor plan of Savvy Contemporary, which is a former crematorium uh, in Berlin, in Wedding. Um, so as I mentioned, this kind of resetting of alignments was uh, done in a uh, curatorial manner. So how did we, we do this or how did we translate this uh, in, in the exhibition? So one is um, we still work on, on the timeline and the flowchart. So, so the timeline and the flowchart, if you would you know, immerse yourself into the, the website, it's a spatial, temporal and fictional uh, timeline. So there's a lot of speculative thoughts uh, and speculative um, uh, touch with, with the factual. Uh, but here, uh, what we wanted to do again was to uh, abstract the flow chart, you know? So it looks like um, a map or a diagram into the space, but actually there's this a process of abstraction here in which, you know, there's, there's, no, um, there's no definite connections to each of, of these uh, events, uh, for example. So, so here we were able to produce uh, not a one-to-one -one correspondence. So, so again, this is going back to the notion of say an essayistic or encyclopedic exhibition about this kind of uh, projects, uh, which tends to be one-to-one -one in terms of correspondence. So here we don't want to, to do a one-to-one -one correspondence in terms of art, discourse, context, and artwork. Um, so, so here, uh, so this is how uh, one would enter the, the exhibition space. Um, and then uh, when you enter the exhibition space, you can um, have a flow chart, a copy of a flow chart, which you would attempt to, to follow, but it wouldn't really make sense. Uh, 
and then uh, so so this is one of the um, artworks uh, by Verlani Halberg, um, who is Indonesian born and based in uh, Sweden. Um, so it's called the Receding Triangular Square, which was produced for Taipei Biennial. Um, so again, um, we it's it's one of the characteristics of this project is that it doesn't necessarily subscribe to uh, certain expectations about you know uh, an exhibition that might be connected to Southeast Asia. So so there's that kind of uh, contamination of uh, indices and and references as well. So in addition to the abstraction of uh, flowchart, um, and then. Um, um, we also use a lot of uh, archival materials from um, Vargas Museum during the 1970s uh, internationalization of, of the Philippines. Um, but then what I wanted to, and, and this, this um, projected film here is uh, by Hu Tsu Nian, The Nameless. Um, but I, what I wanted to, to highlight here as well uh, is you know, the, the timestamps that, that are uh, seen uh, next to uh, video projections. Uh, so in, in the crematorium, what we also wanted to do is to, um, to instantiate a moment in which there is that kind of uh, literal accumulation of works uh, in relation to uh, what we wanted to, to do in terms of conversion of the crematorium into a kind of gymnasium, you know, in which, you know, artworks, artifacts struggle to to gain, you know, uh, stability and to, to find placement into the exhibition space. So here, uh, there is that kind of accumulation of artworks in which the artworks, um, primarily video works, uh, were choreographed to be um, to be launched or to be uh, presented at a certain period of time during the first three uh, days of the exhibit opening. Um, so, which I think is. Um, uh, some of these projects are also coinciding with um, the public programming that we did in uh, from Bandung to Berlin. Uh, so here, so these are some of the uh, archival materials that we have. So the internationalization during the 70s in Africa and in Russia, for example. Uh, but these are uh, these archival materials were paired. Uh, with other elements of the project. So, so again, it's, it's not complete and it's not very uh, informational in, in that sense, uh, but the idea was to uh, consider other connections with other projects or with other uh, contexts. Um, so yeah, and then we also have um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we were also interested in this kind of uh, contamination of, of indices you know, and, and references and resources. Uh, so you have here um, uh, Muhammad Ali's um, uh, boxing uh, tournament in Manila, uh, which was uh, juxtaposed with um, other events in um, the project. So you have the uh, Cultural Center of the Philippines, the inauguration of uh, the Philippine International Convention Center. Um, and then uh, we also have here um, Hiwa K case uh, Chicago Boys, uh, which is you know, about you know, the, the notion of um, South Americans who were sent to Chicago to study economics and then you know, produce neoliberalism in South America. So, so this is in, again, um, in conversation, what we wanted to say about you know, the the contamination of um, resources, uh, the contamination of references. So it's not uh, primarily just um, uh, demarcated by, say, discourses around Southeast Asia and the Cold War and, say, the US. So, so we, we wanted to open up uh, new connections as well um, and then disconnect the, the dominant uh, transnational narratives, you know. So, so this is Chicago Boys. Uh, so we also worked with um, um, a lot of Eastern European uh, artists. Uh, so we have here the Bureau of Melodramatic Research uh, from, from Romania. Um, so yeah, so, so these uh, three points, I think, is, is, one, is, is the one thing that I wanted to, 
to to highlight in terms of uh, the the process in which curatorial research uh, approach an exhibition. You know, um, the the kind of uh, abstraction of timeline, uh, abstraction of flowchart, uh, the the choreography of artworks, and then um, the contamination of um, indices or uh, indices of references and sources. <laughs> Um, so now I'll, I'll move into um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a Tripoli agreement in 2018, um, uh, which is a part of a um, residency that I did with Sharjah Art Foundation. So, so here, um, earlier we have this curatorial research as a kind of um, mobilizing force in terms of uh, the movement within the exhibition. Uh, but here in a Tripoli agreement, um, I'm, I think I'm more interested in uh, the simultaneity of doing the exhibition and doing the research. So the production of research and production of exhibition uh, comes together, you know, uh, so different from, from Bandung to Berlin, which is an output. Uh, so here we, we, we take the, the exhibition uh, space or the, the process of exhibition making as a kind of uh, temporary station in which these ideas could uh, be prototyped or incubated, right? Uh, so just a brief background on, on the project. Uh, a Tripoli Agreement, if anyone's familiar about it, is it's based on uh, the 1976 uh, Tripoli Agreement, which is a peace agreement uh, uh, between um, Mindanao or the secessionist groups in Mindanao and the Philippines. So it's a, it's a very international uh, document and brokered by Islamic countries, uh, which also highlights the, the kind of pan-Islamic movement in, in Southeast Asia, uh, particularly uh, into the Philippines. Uh, because uh, at a certain point, you know, during the, um, the negotiation of the peace process, uh, the secessionist groups in, in Mindanao uh, were still not uh, honored as a kind of, you know, uh, Islamic state or something. Um, so, so here, uh, it's based on the itinerant uh, movement of the document uh, from Mindanao to Libya to Turkey to Malaysia uh, until it reached the Philippines as a kind of concrete document for, for peace, right? But what's interesting, I think, <coughs> excuse me. So what's interesting about this um, document is that um, it always says, you know, if you review the document, it always says, the provision always says to be discussed later. So to be discussed later is a kind of um, prominent feature of the document. So, so there's that kind of um, unfolding and disclosing of the, the document as something that is um, very vulnerable, still very vulnerable. So, so this is the kind of uh, landscape of the exhibition and research that uh, I wanted to, to initiate um, you know, through the itinerant document. And, and here, um, I'm more interested in terms of um, how the, the projects or the archival materials uh, that will be used uh, will provide some sort of jumps into the thinking of, of uh, the context and the subject, right? Um, so, so here I'll, I'll focus more on um, I'll focus more on archival uh, contributions. Um, in the project. Um, I, I wanted to highlight the archival contribution and to, um, to note their, their capacity as, as something that is not necessarily informational. So, so here, um, they don't perform the fullness of, of information, right? Uh, in which you know, it could reveal the context of Mindanao, it could reveal the, the context of uh, Islamic countries in relation to Mindanao. Uh, what I'm more interested in is um, how these um, archival documents could provide a kind of uh, map or a kind of um, diagram in which you know the audience could uh, use uh, in terms of deepening their their um, uh, engagement with with the exhibition. Uh, so so here the archival is not informational. Um, so one of the archival uh, projects here is um, mediated by a media scholar, Dayang Iraula, uh, titled Agungan Resounding South. 
uh, based on Jose Maceda's uh, field work in uh, Mindanao. Um, so, so here, hi, is it working? Okay. Um, I mean, I think the my slide is not working. Sense. Yeah, but just to continue uh, resounding the South, so it's based on uh, Jose Maceda's uh, fieldwork in Mindanao, and it's uh, a modular exhibition uh, in which it was uh, presenting um, the universality of gong as a first module. Uh, the second was the making of gong, and then um, the third module was about uh, agungan. Uh, the composition that was made in 1966. Um, and the final, um, the final module is um, the contemporary invention of uh, gong and agungan in um, uh, rural areas in Mindanao and in, also in urban areas in, in the Philippines. So I think my slide is not working. Yeah, I suppose it's tough. Sure Maybe you can. Uh... Yeah, you can read to the the slides. Sure. Now stop sharing and then reshare it. Try. Yeah. Or maybe you can close the file and reopen it. Yeah. How can you stop? My screen sharing. I can't stop my screen sharing. <laughs> uh, okay, I can do so. Thank you. Can you can you do it again? Yeah, I'll do it again. Can you see it now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we can now. Yeah. So. Nice. This is Agungan uh, or Gong of Sounds by Jose Maceda. Okay, so I think there's just a bit of delay. Uh, and these are the field notes of Jose Maceda. Uh, so, and um, the guy on the left here is uh, Jose Maceda's uh, informant, you know, of course at the time, uh, there, you know, that kind of research regime, uh, you know, locals are, are considered as local informants. Uh, anyway, um, so he's a master of Gong and then he worked with, with him and um, he, he was also brought by Maceda to other uh, places. Like for example, he also visited Iran with Maceda uh, in order to perform. Uh, so this is the making of Gong. Um, so yeah, so, so here, um, we also have uh, another project uh, that I wanted to uh, mention, uh, which is titled Anjing, meaning dog, uh, by Malaysia Design Archive in collaboration with Nazir Fadzila. Uh, so here, um, we, we also wanted to, to highlight the kind of uh, vulnerability and fragility of, of archives in terms of transmission of knowledge and interpretation, right? Uh, so here, this is a, a prime example for, for for instance, of the discourses around uh, the permiss permissibility of touching a dog. Uh, so it's based on uh, oral and uh, manuscripts, uh, oral reports, uh, accounts, and, and manuscripts uh, regarding a story of a sultan who allowed a dog to be in, in the court uh, in 1937. Uh, so this is in relation to uh, the 2014 uh, major uh, uh, controversy or a major uh, uh, event in, in Kuala Lumpur in 2014, uh, which was titled, I Want to Touch Dog. Uh, so, so this is also very interesting in terms of uh, showing it in, in the context of um, Sharjah or in UAE, which uh, was surprisingly was of course allowed. And, and there was no major issue in terms of uh, showing such uh, project. 
Uh, so, so here, you know, you, you have the archives for reinterpretation and uh, the relocation or the collocation of, of other uh, archives within this kind of uh, formidable uh, sources of, uh, of accounts about Islamic culture, for example, like the Quran. Uh, so, so you have other uh, more popular accounts to it. Uh, so, so here, um, that's, that's what I wanted to say about, you know, in terms of the informational. Uh, so this is how it looks like in uh, the exhibition space. Uh, so this is Anjing. Um, and then, um, so from archives, uh, from field work, uh, what I wanted to, to do with the archives as well was to uh, look into the, the process of narration. So here uh, you have the project by Iranian artist uh, Sina Saifi uh, titled Four Mass of an Eastern Postmodernism. So what I wanted to to highlight here is, is the legacies and uh, of storytelling and what forms of storytelling or methodologies of storytelling uh, were kind of uh, tempered, uh, absented in, in terms of the documentation of um, archival materials or information or data, for example. So, so this is not necessarily an archival project, but it's based on a lot of archival work. Um, and what I wanted to highlight here is um, the, the notion of uh, rotational avatars, you know, uh, in which uh, the, the artist was looking into uh, the avatars of an insurgent, uh, a poet, uh, a mystic, and a sectarian. And, and one of the major uh, elements of, of this uh, uh, installation, which is a, a kind of a diplomatic uh, living, uh, so it's kind of, an, um, one of those living spaces in uh, embassies, um, in, in uh, embassies of Iran, for example. So that, that's a reference for uh, the artist. Uh, but within it is uh, a 12 minute uh, video work, which is an assemblage of uh, uh, animations uh, that were televised in, um, in Iran. Um, so, so what I find it uh, very interesting here is the kind of um, um, rethinking and also uh, rechanneling the kind of agencies, you know, or or destabilizing the agencies of storytellers, and in which you know the pictorial and other kind of uh, interventions were made possible. Uh, so the, the the title of this video is uh, "Writing Chaos." Uh, I think you could look into his website to watch the full film. Um, so here are some of the, so yeah. So, so from Sina Saifi, uh, another major uh, archival component of the project is uh, a collection of, um, of books and uh, scholarships by uh, three um, Filipino Muslim uh, scholars or scholars who are invested into uh, uh, thinking about the, the connection of the Philippines into the larger Islamic uh, migration or context. So we have uh, Najib Salibi, who is a, a Syrian American uh, who was in the Philippines uh, at the break of the century during the American uh, colonization. And then we have Mamitua Saber, uh, who is a Maranao who established a museum, uh, who I later on will talk about, and Cesar Majul, who is a scholar in the 1970s, who was a convert. So Majul was a convert uh, to, to Islam, or also called Balik Islam in, in Filipino. Uh, so these, these works are kind of seminal um, collections in terms of uh, producing uh, a reliable connection to, to the Middle East. Uh, so for, for example, uh, the, the magazines here are actually from, uh, from Cairo. Uh, so these are Minbar al-Islam, uh, which was collected by, um, which was collected by uh, Majul, um, who also uh, founded uh, the Institute of uh, Islamic Studies in the Philippines. Um, and then you have these uh, um, germinal books in terms of, uh, ethnography and the studies of law and religion. So these, these were uh, authored by Najib Salibi, the Syrian American from 
Sige. So, yeah. And I think lastly, um, the the last uh, project that I'll talk about is um, the the Mami Tua Saber project. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, Mami Tua Saber is a uh, important figure in development of uh, culture and uh, the artistic in in the south of the Philippines. So he he founded the first Islamic Arts Museum in uh, 1960s, uh, and then also founded uh, co-founded. Uh, a state university dedicated to Muslim Filipinos and other indigenous groups uh, living in in the South. Um, so, so while you know, um, but from Bandung to Berlin is a kind of post you know uh, post exhibition uh, in terms of curatorial research, and then a Tripoli agreement is very simultaneous. Um, what I wanted to to highlight here as a feature of uh, the Mamitua Saber project. Um, is that um, it's it's more of um, uh, preter, you know? It's it's beyond and more than, uh, but not also proto, you know. So so I don't I didn't want to 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 discuss or I didn't want to to bring up another myth about you know a very originary position of of Saber. Um, so and but this is also hardly a pre. So it's it's both beyond and more than in itself, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and and therefore it it it's a, it's an interesting kind of para curatorial project, and and this is precisely because of um, the, the the project which is uh, about a person uh, releases the the stability of the eye, you know. So so the um, the eye, you know, as the subject protagonist of the exhibition, um, is is very unstable, and therefore the. The, the subject of the exhibition is is not predetermined, you know. Um, so, so so here, um, what I wanted to show is, wait. So so this is um, a project with three you know research uh, with three artists producing new commissioned works. Uh, but it's based on, uh, let me show you the diagram. But it's based on um, Mamitua Saber's um, theory of the marginal leader. Uh, so Mamitua Saber actually uh, studied in the US in 1950s uh, in Kansas. And, and there he, he proposed a theory of the marginal leader uh, based on you know, the, the kind of research regime at the time around uh, marginal man. So, so that, that was kind of a dominant sociological uh, project at that time. Uh, so here he produced two, <clears throat> um, two uh, diagrams on what a marginal leader looks like and how this marginal leader could actually operate in, in Marawi. So Marawi is the place uh, where he came from and where the, the museum was, was built and where the university was built. Uh, and then Marawi, you know, um, has to become a kind of a cultural culture contact context. So it was occupied by the Americans. Uh, it became a kind of uh, territory uh, army, you know, uh, uh, territory. And then uh, originally it was by the indigenous Muslims. Um, and then, you know, a lot of Christians came. So that kind of story. So, so that was in 1950s in which, you know, he, he was thinking of how do we imagine a person who could operate uh, within the kind of dominant culture in the Philippines and uh, the moral culture in, in, in Mindanao? Uh, so, so here, um, I invited three different uh, research commissions, uh, artistic commissions, uh, in which um, I wanted to, uh, to ask them how could they deepen uh, their understanding or how could they deepen the theory of, of uh, Mamitua Saber in relation to the present context, you know, in, in contemporary conditions. Uh, so we have here from where labor blooms, uh, in which uh, the artist uh, Mark Sanchez from the Philippines actually um, reconfigured uh, the marginal leader in terms of uh, the construction of um, um, the peasant leader. So, what does it actually mean to think about uh, the marginal leader in the in the context of uh, peasant 
uh, movement, for example, what does a peasant leader look like? And of course, you know, the whole, the whole materials are related to land struggles and all um, the violence around it. Um, so what I wanted to say here as well is that, you know, with this unstable protagonist, uh, who's Mamitua Saber, who seems to hold uh, this project together, um, there are two things that I wanted to highlight here. One is that um, this kind of curatorial research uh, enables the fact that, you know, we, we don't really know the subject. So here we, we don't have the clarity of who the subject is. And then, um, and this subject uh, who we don't know could also compose other subjects and protagonists. Uh, so, so in short, uh, there are other bios around it. Uh, so, so as I mentioned, the peasant leader is another um, uh, articulation of that bio while the unstable subject is, is there. Uh, the second one I think is the, uh, the Moro people in Morotai Island in um, Indonesia. So Morotai Island is a very interesting island in between uh, you know, the archipelagic space that is covered by Indonesia and between uh, Australia. Uh, so, so Morotai is a strategic place uh, because it's close to Mindanao and close to Australia. And it was used by the Americans actually to, uh, to jump ship you know, uh, in terms of their return to the Philippines during the Pacific War. Uh, so it was a strategic point actually uh, in, in terms of, not just in terms of the the politics of war, but also the ways in which you know the the building of nation state was uh, emerged in in Indonesia. Uh, so the the myth around uh, Morotai Island is that you know Moro people uh, from Mindanao actually uh, inhabited the place, but they retreated to the forest as um, the nation state of Indonesia started to claim it as a part of their territory. And uh, so you have here the timeline of uh, the Morotai. And then um, lastly, I think another bio that uh, was kind of um, promoted uh, within this context is uh, the uh, figure of uh, factory workers or people transac doing transactions in the borders of uh, Vietnam and China. Uh, so this by the anonymous collective uh, propaganda department. Um, so it's a kinetic, um, kinetic installation in which you know you could dive into it, and then uh, they they produce uh, a publication that uh, is about you know uh, the itinerant uh, female figure within this the transaction of borders uh, in between Vietnam and uh, China. Um, what I wanted to, to say as well, or to add into this discussion about curatorial research is that mm. while, while the subject or the protagonist or the theme of, of the exhibition is, is a bit unstable, um, the curatorial method or the curatorial research uh, proposes to look again into the historical value of something, you know, something that is not yet stable and something that is not so research. Mm -hmm is not so captured at this point. Um, so, and, and a kind of conclusion, I think, and, and just to circle back to um, the title of, of, the prod, of the presentation, You Don't Hurry to Form. Um, this is actually based on a conversation by uh, Mami Tua Saber. So, you know, he was a curator of um, the museum. The museum is called the Aga Khan Museum of Islamic Arts. Um, and then he was uh, sending uh, letters to, to different personalities and, and figures. And then um, he, he wrote a letter to someone who owned uh, a picture of uh, Howard Taft, you know, the, the former governor general um, in the Philippines who was shaking hands with uh, an, an unidentified uh, Moro person who happened to be a Maranao Datu. And then he said that, um, I realized that the picture has um, historical value. And then he asked, uh, could you please copy it for me? Because um, we're developing an exhibition about uh, Mindanao during the American period of time. 
Um, and then he said that, you know, in a separate copy, I will please annotate the, the, the picture. And then um, I'm, I'm waiting for other sources and um, I will have uh, a blown up copy of the, the picture when it reaches you. You don't hurry. So, so what I wanted to say here is that um, the, the annotation, you know, the, the identification of uh, the, the person in the picture and the coming of a blown up image is, is something that, you know, can be delayed. Uh, but it's something that we don't have to hurry uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, it will, it will reach uh, a certain level of understanding or it will be understood in, in the context where it actually belongs. Uh, so, so, so this is something that I'm interested in, in terms of how curatorial research is uh, both patient and uh, active at the same time. Um, and... And yeah, and, and just to highlight the, the photo that you can see is the, the curatorial itineraries of uh, Mamintua Saber in, uh, in Mindanao in relation to his travels. And yeah, so, and, and this is the last slide of the presentation. Um, so, so this is uh, for Promising Arrivals, Violent Departures, um, so it, which is an ongoing research on community newspapers uh, in Mindanao. And one of the first questions that I asked myself uh, when I was doing the, the, the research, which started in 2018, is that uh, will, will, it, will it actually, will this project actually yield art history? Um, and and this is very interesting for me because you know I was I'm trying to review the kind of relationship of image production and uh, the texts that come with it uh, in the context of Mindanao, which doesn't have an art history or a written art history. Um, so here, what I wanted to uh, to show is one of the one of the first images that really uh, attracted me, uh, which was produced in 1948. You know, so this is a few years after the war in which you know, Mindanao was rehabilitating itself. Um, and, and this kind of coming together of, of an image of an atomic bomb and the idea of uh, Mindanao as something that recuperates and something that's going back to business as usual, uh, to participate in, in capitalism, to participate in the world, um, is, is something that's... Uh, produces its own coordinates, you know, uh, which is not necessarily uh, imposing connections, uh, which is for me very interesting as a kind of um, how curating should mobilize this addition of, of materials uh, rather than, you know, pre-programming it uh, for explanation Reprogramming it for uh, education. So, so I think this kind of uh, slowing down the curatorial in which curating decides itself is, is something that I'm also interested in, in I think, discussing in terms of uh, curating, um, curatorial research. Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's, that's it, you know? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Renan. Thank you for your um, great uh, lecturing. And uh, so now, I suppose it's time for our panel um, section. So our panelists, Jia, Alex, Muru, and uh, Haju, please feel free to speak. Thank you, Renan, for showing many interesting uh, pictures. And uh, today, you uh, talked a lot about curatorial research. And uh, I, I want to ask you uh, the difference between the curatorial research and uh, uh, research by an artist. Uh, that means, um, for example, an artist uh, 
when he or she makes uh, an artwork, uh, he or she do a research to, to do that. And uh, in the field of contemporary art, we work with, uh, uh, we curators work with uh, artists and uh, makes an exhibition. And uh, uh, from your presentation, uh, I was wondering uh, wh what is the difference between curatorial research and the research by the artist? True, true. Um, I think that's also one thing that I wanted to um, avoid, you know, in terms of comparison, like in terms of mm -hmm. uh, what's the difference between, you know, curatorial research, artistic research, mm -hmm. or contemporary research on, on art history. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm, I'm not so interested in, in the kind of, you know, at least at this point, you know, uh, demarcating uh, the differences between what the curatorial produces and what the artistic research that is curatorial uh, mm -hmm. produces, uh, for example. Um, I think what I'm interested for, for example, is how they come together and act mm -hmm. in synchronicity in terms of a feature that they share, which is the ways in which uh, they could add something into to, to the process or the, to the thickness of, of the context or the discourse where they arise from. So, so here, um, I'm, I wanted to say that, you know, um, both the artistic and the curatorial is, is something that arrive in the scene, you know, in the middle of something. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so this is also something that's for, for example, in, in the last slide, promising arrivals and violent departures, you know. So if the question about what is uh, Mindanao's art history uh, is posted, uh, do we have to look for, for artists in order to prove that there's such art history, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's one question. And, and there's, of course, there's a lot of infrastructural and practical questions around that artist art history curating. Uh, so, so what I'm interested in, for example, is that um, how do we uh, trust the operations of materials? So for example, the community newspapers, uh, if, if we couldn't you know, identify the artists, the illustrators, uh, does that mean that you know, we can't propose an art history uh, based on uh, the ways in which a community newspaper acts as an exhibition maker. Uh, so, so I think that's, that's also, uh, I mean, that's a long way to answer your question, but I think that's a case for a context in which, you know, you don't have a history of producing artists or, mm -hmm. or production of artists belongs to, to the history of heritage or to, to crafts, for example. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to mix this <laughs> to, to my artistic yeah. research and uh, curatorial research. Yeah, I think it's also about how you, you um, deliver an opening to the artist in terms of cura mm -hmm. your curatorial research. You know what I mean? So, so it's not about, uh, so you, you invite the artist not to illustrate your thoughts, mm -hmm. uh, but to come together in, in the scene of theory, you know? So, so in a way the exhibition is a scene of theory, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in which it's not about application of theory, but really about production new, uh, not necessarily new, but the production of, of new pathways towards uh, mm -hmm. theory, which is mm -hmm. for me, uh, long-term and sustainable. So, mm -hmm. so, so I think that's one thing of, of looking at it. You know, you, you invite the artist to come into the scene, you mm -hmm. know? Don't invite the artist to, um, to, I don't know, to reinforce the scene. Um, mm. to speak. Mm. For example, uh, last uh, year in the in the Aichi Triennale, that uh, I was one of the curator. We invited the uh, Ho Tsuinen, Ho Ho Tsuinen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my my probably pronunciation is bad, but uh, and. Uh, uh, he, he wanted to do a research of Japanese uh, history or the history of the site where he was going to show his work. 
And uh, of course, uh, we, the curators uh, helped him to make the research for that. But the final uh, output uh, is, uh, his, is uh, his work and uh, the, the research. We, we did the, the research together, but uh, this research uh, comes into his, his work. And the, the, the curators or the, the, the organizer show shows uh, the work of him so this is this is uh, the uh, the relationship uh, in 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 that case and from your presentation i i thought that you're trying to do make it some different way mm. uh, and uh, that was uh, very interesting for me <laughs> yeah thank you so uh, actually yeah, can I talk? Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, the Melville, your your um the mention is quite uh, the reminds you of reminds me of kind of you know the relation between history and the exhibition and then further mm -hmm. the meaning of art, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, the uh, what the Ronan talked about is quite uh, interesting. Interestingly, um the art movement which were uh, happen in actually you know the the south the the southeast or whatever called you know the we didn't have you know proper name in those days but anyway just the non-alliant movement and then bandung you know lots of national movement there and then uh, these days uh, kind of uh, actually this sort of representation uh, came into this kind of artistic scene you know with the contemporary artistic scene but as you know they actually the that kind of movement is historically totally forgotten, you know, the, after the 1990s and then the collapse of a socialist blog and then lots of actually neoliberalism came in and then everything changed, you know? And then uh, nowadays, and including the, the Southeastern Asia, they actually invented a new term, you know, global South, something like that is definitely is, uh, the third world. One day it was that those area was called uh, third world the third world and that means uh, which uh, which actually you know the they um, they try to uh, bring in new actual idea of the world in my opinion it's not a simple ge the geographical you know reason but the kind of uh, very political idealism there what i mean we need to the invent you know third world is another world something like that but uh, that kind of dream is the the, the disappear these days and then um uh, even actually we had uh, the faced that kind of worse in the situation, you know, it's so-called the pandemic and then this pandemic, even though actually we actually witnessing uh, actually the, the bull market of the global capitalism is even actually the, our, the na national you know, economy is uh, in crisis, but you know, the financial market in the lots of, you know, such a, you know, the global market based on this new technology, you know, actually still in the full swing, you know, and then the global capitalism goes on. And so, at, so I think actually your actual presentation a little bit um, stimulate me in, in this sense, you know, kind of a, a ongoing, you know, dream. And then uh, on, 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 on one hand, on the other hand, actually kind of a very nostalgic, you know, the feeling toward that kind of history. So uh, there's a very interesting and a very impressive presentation. And then, so um, my question also the quite, you know, related to sort of a memorable scene on, the, the, the question. So uh, it's sort of this sort of representation, you know, is about the kind of uh, bygone, you know, word. That means it's a sort of uh, the forgotten idea, but you try to bring in kind of object, you know, or ob try to the objectify, you know, all those memory. And then uh, how could you actually, do, you know, the um, the imagine you know, those in object, you know, the because we already have. I just uh, saw that exhibition when I visited uh, Tokyo uh, a couple of years ago. The Japan Foundation organized, you know, the Global South exhibition. You know, the Japan Foundation and uh, brought, you know, the, all those actually the artists. You know, they uh, invested or some they funded, and then uh, I saw that such a very grand, you know, the exhibition there, you know, they brought almost all kind of artists, you know, in the, you know, Tokyo, to the Tokyo. And then I found out lots of reportage political art, you know, in there is Indonesia and in the Philippines and then 
even actually, the, you know, the, the Tha Thailand and the, I saw that lots of so, those, you know, the artists. So uh, the, in my, the, my question is, the, how could you actually, you know, the, find out some kind of link between uh, what you actually did in terms of exhibition and then those, you know, sort, sort of uh, uh, real existence of uh, artists? They still actually go go on, even though actually the those in you know, artist is uh, actually the and the fossilized or ossified in terms of exhibition. But uh, that art were it produced by real movement, real political movement, you know, in those in these area in those areas. So, uh, so actually, how could we actually represent such an actuality of a political movement or some? Uh, it might be a, actually a you know, question about uh, how can we deal with this history, you know? So uh, that is my question. Thanks, Alex. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a very practical um, mm. layer to, to the question and also a, a, a larger, you know, um, question that is, you know, very uh, hard to unpack or, you know, it would take time to unpack. Um, but I think, um, I wanted to preface my response to it by saying that um, that's that's why I'm I'm gravitating towards, say, for example, uh, the 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 ways in which children, for example, uh, see politics. You know, so how does you know uh, a child, for example, uh, s relate to a political exhibition? So what 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 kind of Political subjectivity is, is being produced by by a child when he or she encounters uh, these you know very politically uh, charged uh, projects or uh, manifestations of artists and I and I bring to to this discussion that that you know image and uh, the kind of uh, consciousness of a child because. Um, the you know with with child development you know politics and other abstract ideas are uh, are always changing you know it's not pre-programmed and, and it doesn't calcify um, easily uh, unlike for example the way in which uh, we consume uh, um, politics the ways in which we consume uh, exhibitions of of different you know subjects and topics and and urgencies for example. So, so what I wanted to say here as well is that um, in terms of um, uh, looking into the political movement or uh, the kind of politics that produced by specific artistic movement at a different time period, for example, say Maceda or even like scholars from different periods, uh, I think it's, it's also about how the curatorial would, would access it. Uh, and and not just uh, how it is presented. So, so again, curators uh, and artists, I think, are also uh, very much, um, I think, uh, stuck in, in the idea of how, how do we present it uh, mm -hmm. contemporaneously. Uh, but I think that that is not really the question or that's not really the, the, the goal, but maybe how do we uh, render this in such a way that, you know, um, individuals like children uh, are taken seriously as audience, or how do we take um, and uh, a person within the spectrum of mm. SM, um, so so it's about perception as well, you know. So so th again, this might also relate in terms of our relationship uh, to the publics and the ways in which you know curating has always been invested into this production of of its publics as being educated. So when you bring in these three groups, for example, the elderly, uh, children below 10, and people living in autism, uh, all of these constructions, uh, not just of the public and not just of the audience, but the ways in which we make art and we relate to art um, really changes, you know? So, so I'm not saying that the whole paradigm changes. I think what I'm saying is that uh, two things. Um, so in terms of language, uh, that would change um, uh, in terms of the way in which we produce language or how do we facilitate language. And second, the facilitation itself, you know, as, as curators who, who facilitate this transfer of information. So, so that's why, for example, one curatorial methodology, for example, is that, you know, um, 
in translating curatorial research into an exhibition, uh, maybe you need to parse, you need to, to divide. Uh, you don't present uh, this kind of totality. You don't present an essay uh, of, of, of artworks, an essay of thoughts and context, but maybe you, you parse the language in which, you know, these three uh, individuals or these three groups of, of, of people um, could be able to participate in. And, and this is not just about, you know, using these three groups, you know, as an inspiration, but, but really about thinking seriously how we can learn from them in terms of how they relate to the world, you know. So, so for, for example, and, and just to and a kind of anecdote, but I was reading um, uh, Yi Yun Lee's um, short story on, on The New Yorker, and it's, it's about a, a child who, uh, who wrote a letter to Trump, uh, mm -hmm. and he was the only kid in the school who wrote a letter to Trump, and he said that, uh, dear Mr. Trump, uh, could you please be kind, because I like you, but most people don't like you. Um, so, so again, so this, this is very interesting in terms of the ways in which a kid, for example, uh, mm -hmm. relates to politics. Um, and, and with exhibition makings becoming more and more programmed and standard in terms of, of their, you know, um, deployment of politics, I, I think we can learn from the kid in terms of the kind of avatars that they use, you know, in terms of, you know, in every scene, they have a different politics, you know, mm. so, so I think that's what I wanted to say. Mm. Interesting. Alex, there is a question from Randall. Yeah, I send. Uh, yeah, actually, where is it? Uh, no, actually, the third one is a global south is uh, yeah definitely coined by uh, the the how can how can you call it is globalist is uh, the based on the Austria, Austrian Austrian economist you know. That is normally these days they call the globalist, but the third world is definitely is named by those people who participate in Bandung movement in the mm -hmm. Indonesia. So uh, the third world means actually the the in between, you know, mm -hmm. the 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 Soviet Union and then you know the so-called uh, the Western you know the countries. So uh, I think that might be very, uh, in my opinion, very actually the meaningful you know the attempt, even though it's. Uh, Destined to fail, but <laughs> definitely is uh, every kind of political. In my opinion, every political uh, project uh, must be failed. That is uh, the necessity of a politics. You know, the, otherwise uh, the politics turn to be a kind of religious, you know, belief. You know, and it would cause you know more the the actually you know dangerous in you know, a situation. But so uh, anyway, just uh, all political situ the, the project will be failed. But we need to learn something in a pandemic field. It's like uh, Samuel Beckett said, you know, we must do it feel better and then something like that. So, so that's why just the uh, renaissance attempt, the renaissance intuition is so important in my opinion. It's not a kind of reiteration of that kind of rhetoric. You know, the, it's not reiteration of a political rhetoric, but uh, it's not the prop is not kind of propaganda art, but he actually, you uh, give us kind of a, a very slight different perspective on it. I think that is art, you know, the, or some, uh, that is creating, try to find out kind of a slight different perspective on to what we already perceived, you know? It doesn't mean that actually we create a new perception. It doesn't mean that we actually create kind of a, uh, new art, total, total new art, something like that. It's not like that. In my opinion, it's a perspective, a new perspective, you know, comes in, you know, by those exhibitions. So uh, they're very interesting uh, in that sense. Kaju, do, do you have questions? Uh, hi, uh, I'm sorry, my video doesn't work, but my question is very simple that, uh, uh, so Luna, you uh, mentioned at, uh, at the very end of your presentation that about the slowing down the curatorial. 
Yeah, this sounds very interesting to me. Can you talk a bit further about this, slowing down the curatorial? Does right. it mean that you open the maybe process of research for yourself and also for the artist? But mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a curator, we always uh, meet this um, the, anyhow, those researches or the artworks or exhibition should be shared with others and it has to have certain form to be shared. So anyway, it has to be ended somehow. But so when those uh, research and, <laughs> and the making exhibition ends and how the slowing down uh, the curatorial function in this exhibition making. Right. Thanks, Heiju. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the slowing down is, you know, is, is in it. it's also, a, you know, a very attractive buzzword <laughs> within the, the kind of, you know, very neoliberal uh, field where we belong, you know, in curating. Um, and then, so that, that's, that, that's the speed of, of curating, you know, as, as we know it. Um, but then also at the same time, you know, um, the curatorial could also be accused or tend to be extractivist, you know, at the same time um, in terms of research, archives, and, and materials. So, so these are the kind of uh, baseline realities, the neoliberal and the extractivist uh, ways of it. Um, but in terms of slowing down, um, it's uh, what I wanted to, to highlight on, on that is, it's not a complete, you know, stop, you know, or a kind of um, maybe abolitionist or cancel, uh, uh, cancel curating kind of, of uh, rhetoric or speech acts, for, for example, uh, but rather one is to continuously doing uh, curating and research and curatorial research. So you, you continue to work on it, but at the same time, how do you introduce uh, this kind of slowing down within this uh, uh, activity? And, and I think uh, one way of slowing it down is that, you know, um, and, and not just about, you know, working and opening uh, the process with the artist, but actually uh, letting uh, the scene of, of curating, uh, you know, the production of it, the planning of it, uh, the post, uh, post mortem of it, say the publication of it, uh, to be uh, more accommodating to uh, processes and uh, artistic ideas or political positions uh, that are not easily um, understood. You know what I mean? So, so meaning, um, when, when we curate and we make exhibitions, we make publications, uh, we tend to have this uh, 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 subscription to completeness, you know, and, and a kind of uh, strength, you know, a strength of the exhibition in which the artworks are solid, the, the artworks are good, uh, the, the, the ways the artwork communicates is effective. So maybe we need to accommodate a more diverse, you know, spectrum to that, you know. So, so for for example, I find it more interesting to work with artists that I don't necessarily understand their practice, but there's something in there that I can uh, latch onto. Uh, so, so these artists are not necessarily the most popular uh, artists, and these are the projects that do not necessarily get good funding or good exposure. Uh, to specific institutions. Uh, so maybe I'm more interested into that, in the ways in which we could accommodate uh, the formation of artistic thoughts and, and production, you know, because, you know, as a curator, we are an infrastructure to that uh, uh, thought process and the making of, of the artistic. So I'm, I'm more interested into that. Um, second, I think, is, for example, the ways in which we relate to to information, context, and histories. Um, I don't, one way of slowing it down within the exhibition uh, paradigm is that, you know, we, we again parse the language, you know, we, 
we provide them a roadmap uh, in an exhibition, for example. Uh, but it, it's not something that is comprehensive. Uh, I, I think what I wanted to say in relation to, to the faster approach to curating is that they are the ones who are more comprehensive, you know? So big museums, big institutions can, can do blockbuster exhibitions, not because of the, 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 the quality, but actually the, the level of comprehensiveness that they can give to the audience, right? Um, so, so with slowing down, you know, you, you accommodate more experimental uh, perspectives to it, you know, and, and this is not necessarily, and, and the reality of it is that when you slow down within the exhibition, you have to be ready to disperse it elsewhere. Um, you know, art journalists, art reviewers, uh, other stakeholders of art wouldn't be able to, to understand you at a certain point, you know, at the process of slowing down, but you will go there, you will come to that, you know. Um, and then you, you also uh, mentioned, uh, you also asked about um, uh, how, you know, the exhibition and the research ends, right? Um, and then one thing that I'm, I'm curious actually uh, in, in this, in, in the prospects of curatorial research, uh, because it's, um, it's, it's not as um, neat as saying uh, uh, other archival research, for example, that is done by, by other domains, you know, history, anthropology, and other. So, so there's, there's, there's that kind of um, vulnerability to the ways in which curatorial research is done. But the relationship of curatorial research into your question of how it ends, how, how exhibition ends and how um, research ends is that um, it actually facilitates, you know, uh, a certain mobility toward the topics or towards the, the protagonist, towards the materials. So it's a mobilization towards materials, subjects, uh, and processes um, in which, you know, um, doesn't end and begin with, say, the human individual. So, so meaning, it, it actually stages the scene for curating and research. So, so I think that's what I'm trying to say, you know, uh, because, you know, this, the tendency is that, you know, we close the research, uh, we, we end or we conclude the research. What if we think about slowing down the research in order for other um, actors and other materials to come in? So there's a relay relay translation of it, which, you know, uh, it's not about human time anymore. So it's about this kind of uh, relay of, of research and, and ideas, um, which I think, of course, in, in a more, um, more generous context of, of um, scholarship happens already. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Does that sound very convoluted, Heiju? Oh, it's uh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry if it's <laughs> confusing. Yeah, um, no, not. I, I have two questions. And thank you for your sharing. And as a curator, we actually nowadays we have, uh, how say, we are facing with uh, more and more like uh, multiple ways to, to curate our, our exhibition. And uh, like what like what you're doing is uh, to to re re uh, look at the 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 archives and uh, to find some something, and uh, there's a there's one question. Uh, the first is also related to Maru's question uh, question, and uh, now this we are we have yeah I think uh, also in China I saw so many young curators and uh, uh, their cultural concept is. Uh, it's quite similar like you. And uh, because uh, now there's so many uh, young curators, they are doing a, a doing an exhibition like uh, uh, series and also like uh, researcher. And the question is why, why, what's the reason you have to form an exhibition? And uh, so, you know, you, you, you transfer your thinking to, into an exhibition because all more like uh, everything, your cur curatorial, uh, 
practice like uh, more like a, a surgical. So the the second thing, the second question is, uh, what's the difficulties when you doing this kind of exhibition? And because the way I think the the whole uh, what what you are, what, what you have uh, what you were talking about in a more like uh, how to like uh, form your uh, uh, circular thinking and the question is, and uh, uh, do we have the other difficulty to do this exhibition? Yeah, yeah, Thank, yeah. Um, so yeah, so so it's an interesting observation, you know, about a kind of generation of curators, you know, doing in, in the same frequency, for, for example. Um, but, but it's also the same kind of joke at a certain point when about lecture performance, right? Why do yeah. sudden certain types of graduates of specific institutions are like lecture performers? Um, so, but the, the reality of it is that, you know, the question of why do the research in exhibition is, is um, one of logistical and practical realities, you know, uh, for, for example, uh, the, the, the ways in which you can do specific research as, um, as a museum curator, for example, in, in the Philippines or in Southeast Asia, um, it is not very, the range is not very open, you know, so there's, there's kind of a practical reality to it, you know, the, the kind of research that you can do in academia is also very different. Uh, the kind of research that you can do, uh, say, as an artist, is quite, might also be different because of, say, your relationship to the market, uh, for example. Um, so, so this is also both pragmatic, you know, and um, uh, and what they call this um, organizational. Uh, the, the pragmatic is organizational because um, you you consider the exhibition space. Uh, as a way to gather your your thoughts and practices and your resources, so I think the the key word as well is resources. You know, um, there's there's that convenience of of doing it within uh, the site of exhibition making or the logics of exhibition making, uh, because you know uh, you you are more free to experiment or you, you don't have certain oversight and you don't have this and that kind of um, um, requirements, for example. So, so I think the, the exhibition opens up, you know, the possibility to, to practice uh, art in general. You, you know what I mean? So, so um, at one point, I think um, it's also related to perhaps uh, a lot of content. Um, so this is another layer to, to my response is that, you know, um, maybe the reason why the curatorial becomes more experimental and the research becomes more experimental done by curators is that there's that another competition of content production that happens elsewhere. So you just imagine Netflix doing an exhibition and other agencies of, or other studios doing exhibition. And I think they can, and they will at a certain point. So I think um, curators should be more and more um, uh, diligent and hardworking and sincere in terms of this notion of experimentation uh, because the quality of say, even a museum exhibition or a quality of, you know, a biennial exhibition could easily be attained by a resource that is say a Netflix or even Facebook can do a massive exhibition about very specific politics or political movement, for example. So do we want to be, you know, curatorial to be subsumed by content production, content um, engineers say in, in Netflix, for example. So, so that's, um, that's, I think that's a provocation as well in terms of content and curating because we are involved in it. Um, the difficulties I think is that, uh, the one is that, you know, um, these propositions are not easily uh, consumed by, by bigger institutions, you know, um, and which means that you need to continuously package it in a ways that in which, you know, the, the, your exhibition, your, your process could be uh, 
uh, accommodated by the requirements of an institution. So, and of course, um, it's it, another reality is that there's always this alignment of agenda, you know, uh, and the one who needs to, to adjust, of course, is, is, is yourself, myself, for example. Uh, institutions will not adjust to your experimental curatorial idea, uh, however clever that would be, you know. Um, so, so you you don't you will never have an upper hand unless you know you make your own institution, for example, or you make your own museum. Um, yes, yes, thank you. You want, we can open to the audience. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, so we already have several questions uh, came in in the chat box. Shall we go through them? Okay, so the first one, I suppose we'll start here, a question from um, from Randall Urbano. Um, I'm not sure which is that, what, 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 how that question relates. Um, is, there, is a proposal then a developmental approach methodology of curation? I suppose that's about the slowing down methodology or the whole the, the overall you know method we mentioned in the in the talk uh, hi, Randall. I know Randall from Manila so, <laughs> um, so I, I think Randall was reacting to me I don't know maybe development psychology that I mentioned in relation to it uh, or also maybe in relation to accumulation um, I mean that could be uh, one way to to proceed, you know, uh, developmental uh, approach, uh, but it has to be recalibrated as well uh, today. Um, and I, I think there's there's um, discourse around it, you know. So so maybe again going back to Alex, maybe a new perspective. To, I mean, new ways of you know reading into it. Um, yeah, in terms of development, I'll... Hi, this is Randall. Good evening, everyone. Hi, uh, Randall. Uh, yes, uh, good, e good evening or good morning, wherever you are. Yes, uh, uh, I would just like to say yeah, thanks, Renan, for the for the presentation. And yes, I think I because you were you 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 started with the um, with how um, an exhibition or a, a curatorial presentation rather be, be um, it should be read or listened um, by uh, an eight-year-old kid or an old person or it should be as it should be comprehensive enough to accommodate age, but it should also be specific enough to, uh, to actually give us a specific um, insight or um, message that would question your target audience, right? So that's what my question was um, going forward because uh, I was really interested when you were talking about the uh, Tripoli agreement that the, um, that the text on the agreement says that this, um, this agreement is being discussed later or will be moving forward. And I think in terms of particularly Southeast Asian um, curatorial history and even art history, we're still, as you would also know, as Patrick Flores would be saying, it's still developmental. And as would Mami Kataoka would say, is that there is still yet, or curatorial history in Southeast Asia is as young as the 1990s. Um, yeah, so it's actually more of a um, remark than a question, <laughs> rather. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Rendo. Thank you. So, shall we pass on to the next question? Or, yeah. yeah, okay. So, next question is from uh, Dylan. Goal, I suppose. Um, when researching topics without an established history canon, how do curators remain uh, ethical? How do we ensure that our perspective isn't enforced as uh, the new canon? 
uh, this relation to your question, uh, what, what is uh, Mindanao's art history? Thank you, Dylan. Um, I, I think the question of what is Mindanao's art history is, is not necessarily my question, but it's a question, it's the dominant question. It's a dominant fiction that is um, inherited, you know, by practitioners. Uh, the same way that what is, you know, art histories in uh, um, the Pacific, for, for example. So, so that's why I think my question is more on, does it actually yield art history? So if it doesn't yield art history, what does it yield, you know, uh, in relation to uh, the research on, on um, Mindanao? Uh, but also the research in Mindanao is actually not necessarily a research on Mindanao. You, you know what I mean? Um, so so it's, it, it is a very global and imminently, and not imminently, but in and of itself, is a very international modernist uh, material, you know, the, the materials that I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with, uh, for, for example. Um, so, so I think we also need to move away from certain attitudes, like attitudes of that, you know, produces questions like that. You know, like how do we produce an ethical way of researching in Mindanao? How do we produce an ethical way of researching in uh, Papua New Guinea? You know, um, I think there's something really problematic about that question uh, because we don't take the the subject seriously in terms of how they would. And I understand that, of course, there's a practical reality about the question of of ethics. You know, uh, in terms of um, the protocols, blah, 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 and all the organizations behind it. Uh, but that's another issue. Of course, if it's required to, to get a, uh, a permission, you, you know, you do that. Uh, but I'm answering on a different level, you know, that, you know, we, we need to, to restructure, I guess, the way we relate uh, <clears throat> to, to these contexts, you know, uh, which means that, um, so, so, I mean, um, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll have an essay uh, about the Aga Khan Museum of Islamic Arts, um, which, is, um, which is about the kind of disintegration of, of the museum uh, as a modernist museum. And, and there I, I, I highlighted the fact that, you know, uh, the Aga Khan Museum of Islamic Arts is just like any other museum. You know, we, we have to take into account, uh, we have to start, um, uh, approaching our subjects, our subjects as peer, you know. So, so there's a kind of correspondence of e equals that that could make that could happen. Um, and in relation to canon, um, I think I can easily get away with that because one, I'm not I'm not an art historian. Um, so, so I'm 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 interested in the subject, but I'm not um, uh, interested in kind of producing the the art history canon of, of, of Mindanao, for, for example. Uh, I think what I'm doing more is, you know, uh, thinking through Mindanao, you know, uh, taking Mindanao seriously as a kind of um, epistemological site and a, a site that, you know, works the same way as, you know, uh, any other islands. It, can, it could be interesting, it could promote corruption, it, it's, it could be violent. Um, so, so this peer, approach, I guess, is, is something that I'm more interested in. Um, and I think um, the, the question about, you know, how the other project could displace another canon, um, I think it's the same question that was, that's also been raised with alternative artist-run spaces, you know? Um, so, so, so there's, there's this kind of similarity in terms of that, you know, replacement of canon. Um, but but honestly, I'm 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 not just I'm not interested in in in, in canon. So so um, if if the canon would produce an index of references and sources, then I'm I'm happy to a canon. Uh, but but I'm again I'm more interested to consider Mindanao as a legitimate and serious you know uh, reference and source for thinking and and producing works artworks. Okay, thank you, Rina, and then thank you, uh, Dylan. Uh, so next question is from uh, Selena, um, a long and informative question. 
And you spoke uh, earlier about the facilitation uh, of language and how we can learn from audience through their politics, regardless of age. In terms of curatorial research and agency, I see conditional aspects uh, that deter determine and limit audience uh, re relational capacity, such as the uh, space involved. With curatorial research, do you think it's, it is uh, perhaps then uh, also more site-specific, uh, site specific meaning it's uh, very much also influenced by uh, sites uh, affecting the per perspective and opinion on the history? Uh, correction with curatorial research as the next question, sorry. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you, Selena. Um, huh. Well, for, for example, in a Tripoli agreement, um, there's, there's a suite of you know, uh, drawings from uh, Iranian children shortly after the revolution that was included in uh, the exhibition. Uh, but this was not presented in, in the exhibition in itself, but it was actually uh, included in the exhibition booklet, which you know, an audience member could carry around the, the exhibition site. So, so I think you're right. You know, um, this, this could be um, realized through very practical matters and logistical solutions. So for example, uh, you imagine it to be in a publication rather than um, uh, an exhibition uh, wall, for example. Um, so, so there's that. Um, but also at the same time, um, when, I, when I refer to these three different groups, I, I don't just mean um, opening up to the public. Uh, because again, the museums and institutions have diversity code and you know code of you know uh, opening up to the public, you know, uh, which means that they're really open. Um, but this is also about um, trusting the rhythms of artists and curators that uh, execute the exhibitions um, in terms of their uh, edges. You know what I mean? Meaning. Um, again, it goes back to uh, what I mentioned about essayistic or encyclopedic exhibitions. Um, with curatorial research exhibition that is uh, taking the, the autistic perception or the child seriously, um, you take into account um, the ways the world unfolds to them. So it's not about helping them understand our world actually, but it's actually, you know, the, the, the sense of, so you, you, an autistic um, person, uh, an autis autistic perception has this very intense, overwhelming feelings all the time, right? Uh, they always jumps and always on the edge, right? Um, is that something, is, is that rhythm possible within the art projects by artists, for example, that in which, you know, these artistic projects are, are, are not, um, package in a very informational way. So there's a um, schizophrenia in a way, you know, how, how, do you, how do you converse with your artist in which, you know, all of these things that he or she wouldn't accommodate into the art making could go into the art itself. Um, so, so this is not just about audience development when I refer to these three groups. It's, it's about, you know, how we make art uh, and how we, we produce exhibitions in itself. So this is not public programming uh, uh, um, strategy. Uh, this is about art in itself, yeah. Okay, thank you, Irene, and then thank uh, Selena uh, for your question. Is there any more questions from our uh, audience and also from our panelists? Any more questions? All right, if this, actually I have a question. Can I go for it? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, okay, so um, it's only, uh, it's not real, really a question, but I have a thought that 
uh, Brenda, you mentioned uh, method or, or whatever that is, uh, slowing down or don't hurry. Um, and you also, uh, you know, you, you, your work uh, involves a lot about uh, archive and history and um, colonial history even, or kind of uh, the history of nation state. Uh, and I, I'm thinking about those, this kind of combination, this kind of mixture of those two aspects. Uh, does that illuminate or does that, you know, direct to some sort of uh, anti-colonial uh, saying or scenario? Because I'm thinking, you know, um, uh, I suppose that uh, uh, this, uh, mm, this is a sort or this theory by our embodio that there's no theory or there's no archives, there's no text from the I'm not sure I rephrase, uh, rephrase that uh, rightfully from the South or from the global South or from a third world. And his, his is severely critical, uh, criticized by that uh, line, by that. So I'm, so, well, I'm thinking, so in fact, from you research of, and from you, um, you, uh, your exhibitions, uh, there are in fact archive and texts over there, but th there, th that means there, there are, um, tax or ar archiving the global south, whatever that is. Uh, but the thing is, it's not orderly, or it's not it's not it's it is not organized according to a, a Western uh, capitalist or uh, Enlightenment uh, model. So and 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 you also mentioned like slowing down to you know don't hurry and let those information flow. That those information to developing a. In, a, in some certain rhythm or certain uh, kind of re, uh, rain and, you know, um, style. And I'm not, does that have a, you know, relation over there or am I, you know, understand rightfully is there kind of, is this, okay, so uh, put, in, put in another way, is this kind of methodology of slowing down uh, addressing, regarding addressing information, regarding addressing archive, have a kind of, political agency or kind of anti-colonial agency over there? So that's my question, I suppose. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's actually a very interesting question. And it's, it's, um, it's, um, it's an approach that's, um, that's being adapted by, by colleagues and, um, you know, artists from the US of, of in, or in Europe, in, in the diaspora, you know, the global South diaspora in, in those uh, places. Um, in which, you know, uh, because there's no archive or the, the archives is fragmented or, or that, you know, it's hard to locate uh, the comprehensive archives, um, then it, it's becoming more and more difficult to, to digitize these materials. Right. Um, so there's always a project on digitization, right? Uh, on you know, art history and all these things, uh, heritage. Um, and one, one, of the, one of the artists that I recently worked with is uh, Latipa, uh, who was formerly known as Michelle Dizon. Uh, so she, uh, she is based in, in the U.S. And um, she, her, her ancestry is from the south of the Philippines, in Mindanao. So she's an ethnic Chinese uh, in Cotabato which is, of course, predominantly Muslim. Um, and then she's thinking about this idea of, you know, um, going back to the, the analog uh, in which uh, it would allow uh, a refusal uh, to be digitized and to be read by um, institutions uh, in, in the U.S. So this is in relation to uh, projects of digitization in the U.S. in which you know, a lot of colonial archives of the Philippines, for example, are in the U.S. and could be easily curated, could be easily, you know, uh, uh, repurposed uh, by institutions. Um, so, so she was going against uh, that project of uh, turning all these um, um, data or turning these memories into data. Uh, so, so now she's working with, you know, uh, grassroots organizations of you know certain diaspora diaspora communities in terms of how do you archive memories uh, without so much 
reliance on 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 these you know uh, familiar archives that are undergoing digitization. Uh, so so yes, there's there's the kind of um, uh, you call it anti-colonial uh, agency uh, because of this um, uh, lack of infrastructure. Um, so so there there might be something there that's interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Um, is there any more questions from um, from our audience, uh, from our panelists? Well, I, I, I feel we have time for one more question. Any more question? Uh, I have one question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if uh, in any of your research topics uh, don't have uh, official archive. Uh, like you researched about this uh, historical figure and then, and then you made an exhibition, but I'm wondering if there is uh, on archive, I mean, I don't know if I can call it as an official, but by an institution or by an university, maybe it might be related to the question uh, from uh, Yuhan, because I had an experience of making an exhibition when they're uh, about a topic uh, which don't have an archive, official archive from institutions and then I was quite afraid of uh, doing mistakes even though uh, it is an exhibition but what I what I was dealing with was uh, history so I mean the, the idea of having a uh, alternative archive being as an curatorial approach uh, as an uh, could be on way of resistance, but at the same time, there could be on still a fear uh, of making a mistake. So, <laughs> so my question is whether you had any experience of um, of about uh, making an exhibition out of archive, which doesn't have any, yeah, I mean, yeah, which don't have an uh, institutionalized archive, yeah. Yeah, um, yes, uh, when I was working on this um, Mamitua Saber uh, project, the, there, there's no official uh, custodianship uh, to his archives or um, uh, a sustained interest in uh, taking care of, of his legacy, for, for example, although it was produced within the university, you know, and it's a state university, and therefore there should be um, a kind of official and um, archive of Mamitua Saber. But what's interesting uh, about uh, the process was that, you know, the, the museum, uh, which was also a research center and where his office was, was um, was burned down um, numerous times uh, since it was, you know, um, it was built in the 1960s. So there was a series of, of fire and looting that happened in, in the museum and the museum is at its, you know, uh, continuous decay as, as we speak. Uh, so when I was going through the, the library, uh, which is, you know, in a, outside the, at the back of the museum, um, you know, the, the burned papers were, were still very fresh. I mean, you know, they, they, they were, you know, uh, um, what they call this, uh, organized, you know, without uh, proper conservation. Um, so, so you have to kind of, uh, the, the mistakes is, is quite interesting because it's a kind of uh, work uh, into the archives, but also at the same time, you uh, connections suddenly appear. You know, and 
and maybe they they are the mistakes that you're talking about. Uh, but that's an interesting kind of uh, um, node uh, in terms of the research. Um, another thing I think is that um, for for this project, the the archives also belong to um, a Christian missionary uh, group, uh, an American missionary institution in the city. Um, and, and of course, the way it was stored. Uh, so this is not necessarily about uh, Mamitua Saber, but about the museum, about the landscape of, of the city, for example, uh, heritage. And so they were active first before the museum. So they had more archives you know, in, in that region, for example. Uh, but in 2017, uh, they were the first building that was torched down by the ISIS when, when there was a siege in Marawi. Um, and, and it was a very symbolic uh, um, attempt because, you know, it's the only, it's the first and only uh, Christian institution uh, in, in the, the city. Uh, so, so you have all these stories in which um, not just unofficial archives, but um, it's, it's so hard to trust the material anymore, you know? Uh, so, so, so it's not just about the mis mistakes and uh, about, you know, getting your uh, story straight, but um, you started to, to doubt the, the, the materials, the, the, the way the information um, travels to you, for, for example, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Rinan, and thank you, your question uh, from uh, Haju. And uh, I think that's it for uh, this evening. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. So, just several ends were to conclude. Um, okay, so here we go. Mm, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so about the Asian Creative Panel Talk uh, hosted by the Art Center and Global Center for Technological, uh, Technology and Humanity at Kunhi University. And so, as we already know, a monthly discussion project aimed to share works, ideas, and thoughts with Asian based curators and uh, art practitioners. And please check our uh, website and, and social media page for more information. So, for our uh, next session, uh, we're going to have uh, um, uh, we're going to have uh, um, uh, Taka, uh, Takashi uh, Mizuku. Mizuku. Uh, Mizuki. Yeah, Mizuki. Uh, Mizuki, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I suppose she's in the, in the Zoom meeting too. Hello. Mizuki, can you, can you hear me? It's sorry, it's not, I'm just on mute. Sorry. Uh, no, no, no. I was listening. No, I, was I, I would like to introduce Mizuki. Uh, she's my, my colleague and uh, a friend of mine, now based in Hong Kong, and uh, the director of CHAT recently mm. opened. Uh, it's a museum for art and textile. Mm. And uh, yeah. I asked her to make a presentation for the next session. Nice. Yeah. Could you, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, say hello to everyone? Hello everyone. Sorry, I'm, I'm just eating the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I don't, I don't turn on my camera, but um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you very much for um your invitation. So I'm just while listening to your discussions, I was just wondering what to share and the next mm -hmm. sessions. But um, <laughs> yeah, after that, I'm going to um, well, uh, I, I need to talk with the Melrose and the Nanobans. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, looking forward. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. thank yeah. you, Mizuki. Yeah. So, um, so the, the the for next session is going to take place uh, around uh, mid March, I suppose. We're going to rest for next month for our uh, spring festival, I suppose. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to speak skip next month, and uh, we're going to have uh, our next session at uh, mid March and. Uh, specific time and date will follow up, and uh, I think that's it. Thank you, everyone. And please, uh, panelists and, uh, and, and ring and, and, um, and I guess speaker, please uh, also music sound. Please uh, stay for a while after uh, after this session. And uh, good night, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Yeah. Music, music sound. Please stay.
Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Ya. <laughs>